Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Math and Physics Fun with Gus. Today, we're going to be doing um, 3D quantum mechanics, and we're going to just do a quick review of uh, PDEs, and just we have two variables. Um, the similar logic applies to three variables and time, so four variables. So if V is time independent, uh, there is a complete set of stationary states such that you have now psi of n, which is a function of um, position times a function of time. So you can then separate them like so. Since V is time independent, you can take the Schrodinger equation and solve uh, fi and find the time independent Schrodinger equation, which is in green. So basically you, you sub this in for psi, then you divide by uh, this function times this function. You should be able to get this with a little bit of algebraic manipulation. I can do a video on that if you guys would like. So thus, the general solution to the time dependent Schrodinger equation is this. And you can test that by substituting that in here and seeing it's left hand side equals the right hand side. So now to start the actual video where we have a potential cube, which is what we're going to be doing. So solve for an infinite cubic well where v equals 0 if x, y, and z are between 0 and a. Okay? Otherwise, infinity. So outside this box, v is infinity. So we're not going to find the cube out there. So we don't have to worry about it. Psi is going to be zero. So let's uh, now start working on inside the cube. So inside this cube, v is zero. So we're going to lose this part to the Schrodinger equation. So it's going to be zero, and we're going to get minus h bar squared over two m the Laplacian of psi equals e psi. Now just like we up here times two functions times each other to get psi, we're going to attempt the same uh, process here to solve this, this PDE. It's a very uh, common uh, thing to do when solving for PDEs. Make functions times each other and then substitute them. See if you can separ uh, separate the variables and get, get it to work. So we're going to have psi equal x, which is a function of x, y, which is some function of y, z, which is again some function of z. So now let's substitute that in here. So we're going to get minus h bar squared over 2m the Laplacian of x. And I'm going to not going to write these um, there. I'm just going to leave it like this. Equals e x, y, and z. Now uh, the Laplacian operator, I'm going to write uh, very quickly and fast forward it. Okay, so what's going to happen when we um, take the Laplacian of this? Well, we're going to get, if we're taking it with respect to x, right, it's going to be the second derivative of x. These are going to constant. So we're going to get y, x double prime, y, z. And for this one, we're going to get y double prime, x, z. For this one, we're going to get z double prime, x, z, because these remain the constants. All right, so let's, uh, let's do that. And I'm also going to times this. Um, I'm going to times minus 2m divided by h bar squared through this entire thing. See, we're going to get x uh, double prime y z plus x y double prime z plus x y, that's a terrible x, that's y z double prime is equal to 2m e h bar squared minus minus x, x, y, z. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to isolate the variables. So if you isolate them, we'll see that when one of the changes, wait, so one is off. Let me just do it. I talk, I talk too much. Very sorry. So we're going to divide by 1 over um, the function of x, the function of y, and the function of z. Okay, so we're going to get, well, if you divide by this throughout the whole thing, um, this will be x double prime divided by x. x double prime over x. Now we're going to let, we're going to let k squared equal oops, uh, 2me over h bar squared. And we're going to get that um, 
Basically, we're going to get the same thing here, except this is going to be negative k. Okay, so basically what we see is that the sum of all of these terms must be equal to negative k squared. What we also realize is that since these are functions of x, when x changes, right, if you change this, this, this function over here, this is, nothing's going to happen here. Nothing's going to happen here. So we're going to separate this part and set it equal to some, something but the x part of k. So we're going to let k equal also k squared equal k times the x part squared plus k times the y part squared plus k times the z part squared. And that sum will equal this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to separate all these parts. So we're going to get, um, let me do this in blue. So we're going to get uh, double x, double prime, sorry, um, plus kx squared equals 0. Bam. And if you guys are curious what I did, I just added this, and then I substitute this in, and I realized that this is the x part. So I, I then separate it. As we said, this does not change on this, and the sum must equal that. So we can then separate it. So I'm only going to do the x one, and because you'll you'll get the same answer for um, the rest of these, except they're functions of z or y, and you're about to see the simple harmonic oscillator, very famous, very beautiful thing. So I just times everything by x, and that's equal to zero, and we know that the solution to this, we know that x, the function of x, is going to equal a e to the i k, oops, k x, x. And this is now a lowercase x, because this is the function. So if we differentiate this twice, we're going to negative uh, kx squared a, and then we'll get 0. So this works. And now we're going to expand this, and we're going to let it equal a, a cosine of kxx, well, this is just a subscript, plus b sine kxx. You know, if we apply the boundary conditions, um, that this is going to be 0, because it has to be 0 at the bounds, and that sine works. Sine works. Okay, so we now have uh, that, and what we're going to find is that just like as we saw for um, the one-dimensional potential well where x, the k is going to be the same. So what we're going to get is we're going to get now that x of x, sorry, you know what I mean, um, is going to be, I'm just going to call this constant uh, a sine of a uh, n x, right, where n is the, the quantum number, pi a x, same thing. And we're going to apply the normalization condition, which is also the same. And we remember that it's going to be the square root of 2 over a sine of n x, pi over a x. And basically, we're going to find the same thing for y and z. So we now have our functions. And we also know that that we have k, the, the y part of k here, the x part of k here, and the z part of k here. So now we can solve for k. And then from k, we can solve for e. So we said that um, k squared equals, must also equal to, well, if we square each of these terms, we'll have the pi divided by a, pi divided by a, pi divided by a. If we factor that out, squared, and then we get an x squared plus n y squared plus n z squared. And then we recall we made that uh, k two, oops, two n e divided by h bar which means e is equal to k squared h bar squared over 2m. So we have that k is equal to this. We substitute that in. We're going to then get that e is equal to h bar squared over 2m times 
pi over a squared times, now it's, it's instead of just being related to n, it's related to n squared plus y squared, uh, n y squared plus n z squared. And that's what we have now. So this is, we now have, I'm going to write everything, the main points of uh, everything for you guys, but now we have the energy levels related to um, the, the quantum state the particle is in. So that that's really it. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, it was really just an introduction to solving PDEs. It's not a very difficult one to solve, I don't think. So I hope it was helpful. If it wasn't, let me know. Try to make another one, maybe improve it. But All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful.